Welcome to the top custom Hearthstone cards of the week, where I take a look at the most interesting and creative cards posted to the custom Hearthstone subreddit. And the first card we have this week is Cool Pose. It is a one mana shaman spell that reads freeze a minion, and it has plus four, plus four while frozen. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know I'm a fan of cards that can be used multiple ways, you know, both offensively and defensively. And this is a perfect example of that. This card can be used to freeze an enemy minion, you know, to, uh, to keep pushing face or just avoid a big threat, but it can also be used defensively. You know, I like the idea of playing this on a taunt minion against an aggro deck to just really hold the line. And you can compare this card to say Cryostasis. It's very, very similar and that card was not played, but maybe being one mana would tip it over the edge. But freeze effects, they're very interesting because they're very tough to balance. You know, they ride this fine line between being terrible and just being super frustrating to play against. If you have any cool ideas for any kind of freeze cards or freeze effects, go ahead and post them in the comments. The second card this week is Forest Invoker. It is a five mana, three, five Druid minion with choose one, gain life stealer poisonous, and battle cry deal three damage. This card can be useful in just so many different situations. You know, it can take out a threat and leave a poisonous body on the board. It can possibly also take out a threat and leave a lifesteal body on the board, gain you some life. The only problem here is I'm not sure if it's quite balanced enough. You know, I feel like the poisonous option for five mana seems okay. It's basically five mana to remove a minion and leave a three, five poisonous body on the board. But the lifesteal option feels a little weak. So I don't know, maybe turning up the battle cry to four damage instead to make that a bit better. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. I could be wrong, but I don't remember there being any choose one cards that also have a battle cry. So I think that's super unique in that regard. And, and choose one is just such an interesting and fun mechanic to me. It's something I wish they would explore and maybe expand on a bit more. And, and that this is a perfect example of that. Then coming in at number three, we have Plush Tannis. It is a seven mana four four legendary neutral minion with battle cry, eat the highest cost spell in your opponent's hand, death rattle cast it and this is obviously a play on mutanus which has a similar effect but with minions and and i have to say i absolutely love mutanus you know there's been times where it's bit me in the ass and my opponent plays it but it feels so good to drop mutanus and hit you know a key minion or combo piece in your opponent's hand a lot of people aren't a fan of hand disruption but mutanus kind of feels like a fair hand disruption you know i think the fact that it costs seven mana helps in that regard it's not something you're typically cheating out in early turns or or repeating over and over again. So with liking Mutanus so much, I think this is a great card. You know, the only thing I would probably change is to change the battle cry from highest cost spell to just a random spell. You know, looking at Mutanus, Mutanus doesn't target a specific minion. It's just a random minion in your hands. And I think targeting the highest cost spell is just you know, too disruptive in a way. So I love this card for, for multiple reasons, but if I had to change anything, like I said, it would be to change it, just be a random spell in your opponent's hand. I think that's much more fair, but still very good. And next up for the fourth card, we have Panic Button. It is a two mana warrior spell that reads gain 20 armor. You can't gain armor for the next three turns. And I have to say the flavor of this card is just on point. You know, it's this big oh shit card that you gain a ton of armor, but you're kind of exhausting yourself and you know, you can't gain armor for the next three turns, which is huge. It does seem like a lot 20 armor for two mana, but if you were to add up all the armor you can get over three turns for not a whole lot of mana nowadays, you know, it doesn't seem as crazy. It's essentially six to seven mana per turn. So again, it doesn't seem that crazy in that regard. It's just so front loaded. You know, on one hand, it seems super, super strong, right? You're paying two mana for 20 armor, but then you have to think if you have more armor cards in your hand, they're essentially worthless the next few turns. So yes, against aggro or something like that, it does hold them back a bit, but if they break through that armor in a turn or two and you still can't gain armor for another turn after that, it's just backbreaking. So I really do like the idea of not being able to gain armor for subsequent turns and the trade-off being, you know, uh, an explosive payoff. So this is definitely a very unique idea and something I would like to see in the game for sure. And this actually leads into the last card, which is Self-Destruct Button. It is a 10 mana legendary warrior spell that reads deal 30 damage to your hero and deal 20 damage to the enemy hero. <laughs> which I've said it in the past, I believe, but I really wish they would utilize armor more as a resource. You know, being able to use armor to pay for cards or to deal damage, I think is a really underutilized mechanic. And that's essentially what this is, right? Because you're gonna be playing it when you have a bunch of armor to be able to take the 30 damage. And it's just super fun. You know, I, I would love for them to give more cards like this to Warrior. It makes armor a more interesting mechanic versus just, you know, avoiding damage. 
And one thing to note, you know, I was reading the comments for this card and people did mention that this card could result in a draw. So I think the way this card would have to resolve is it would do the 30 damage to you. And if you were still alive, you would then deal the 20 damage to your opponent because it, it is for sure. It is too easy to just force a draw with this card, which isn't fun. Not to repeat myself, you know, I love expanding mechanics essentially right mechanics that already exist in the game expand them to be used in different ways or in different situations and one thing i want to point out is i am all for you know class specific win conditions i feel like recently we've been straying more towards neutral win conditions you know between astalor reno yog and i really hope that we move more towards more class specific win conditions because when everyone's just using the same neutral win conditions, it makes all the decks feel so samey. You know, I want the classes to feel unique again. I want the classes to all win in their own different unique way. And this is a perfect example of that. But let me know in the comments, do you agree that decks are starting to feel more samey? Or do you like that, you know, neutral legendaries are becoming stronger, more powerful? Or do you want there to be more class win conditions like this? Let me know. That'll be all the cards for this week, though. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and leave a comment. Let me know what was your favorite card this week. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.